Hello, welcome to my vlog. It's been five months since my last one. I have been very busy. I was going to do one in June, but then I had a disaster, which I'll explain later. But I have been busy making other videos. I continued making the Taekwondo lesson videos, and I started a few new series. One on starting out on Taekwondo, one on uh, Taekwondo science, and another one on sparring drills. And very soon, I'll release another new series on Taekwondo philosophy. So let's catch up with what's been happening. Last March, I had Scott Atkins, the film star at my Taekwondo Academy in Croydon. It's the second time he's been there to do a power kicking seminar organized by A23. And here's a glimpse of what the seminar was like. You may have recognized another film star in that clip, Silvio Simak. He was special guest at the seminar. I've known Silvio for many years since he used to do ITF Taekwondo and compete for England, but it's been many years since I've seen him, so it was nice to catch up. And I managed to get this interview with him. Okay, I'm here with Silvio Simak. Hello, it was a long time I haven't seen you. Yeah, it's been a long time. Yeah. Been we're, we're here at the uh, Scott Atkins seminar and uh, Silvio was a special guest. So, I haven't seen you since the days of uh, competing in the ITF England team. Yeah. True, but it's been, it's been at least 15, 15 to 20 years since I started competing in ITF Taekwondo, so it's a real pleasure to be back here at uh, yeah, it's good to see you again. Yeah. It's, been, it's a real pleasure just to be coming back to my roots. Yeah, did you, did you still practice Taekwondo? I practice martial arts, I wouldn't really give it a name, call it Taekwondo. Right. I don't practice Taekwondo patterns, but uh, I would say my nucleus and everything I've done so far and I'm doing comes from ITF Taekwondo. Yeah. So it's a very, very strongly uh, rooted in me. And you've been doing so many films now? So. I've, I've done 36 movies so far. I'm still involved uh, in producing as well as uh, behind the camera. So uh, it's fun. It's What's fun. the latest one you've been doing? I, I've got uh, Transit 17 coming out in May and also uh, Knights of the Damned, which comes out in April. Okay. So I'm looking forward to yeah. release. And you're coming up soon. Right, that's great. Coming up soon, yeah. Coming up soon, thank, thank you. you. And how can people follow you? Uh, do you know, I've only started recently using uh, the uh, social media, Instagram in particular. I'm on, I'm on Facebook, so you can all join in on Facebook and follow me. Okay. Also on Instagram, Twitter, I'm not so, so hot on, but uh, okay, well, Instagram well, and Facebook, you can follow me on there. Well, if you give me your details, I'll put it on my, on sure. my blog. Thank you. Yeah, so Very thanks nice. for coming. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Pleasure. Thank you. That film you mentioned, The Knights of the Dam, has now been released, so I look forward to going see that film. Also, Silvio has released his own YouTube channel. He's done videos on functional training, so you can check it out. His uh, channel name is Silvio Simak, and I've put the details in the description below. Another famous name at the seminar was Aaron Gasso. Some of you will know him as the Ginger Ninja Trickster. It's the first time I met him. Very nice guy, very courteous. And I'm so pleased to see somebody from ITF Taekwondo doing so well on YouTube. Now, other things that have been happening, uh, I did a seminar in Newcastle for the kids' program. If you don't know already, I go around the world teaching instructors how to teach the kids' program, which I developed for the ITF. In another video, I'll explain a little bit more about my work with the ITF kids' program. 
Now, as I mentioned earlier, last June, there was a big disaster. You may have heard of the Grenfell Tower fire that happened in London. Now, that's just opposite my Kensington Taekwondo school. And unfortunately, some of my students were involved in that. Uh, I lost some of my students, four in fact, very young students, as young as five, six years old. Uh, some of them were training there. Five of the kids were training that very night that the fire happened. It's been very difficult for everybody at the school, very emotional, but we've been very supportive of each other. And we're trying to raise funds to help the survivors of the fire. We're aiming to get £30,000. It looks like we'll surpass that. And we've done a special fundraising event called the Mega Kickathon, where every participant does a thousand kicks to raise ten pounds, and the idea is to try and get a million kicks. So I would like to thank everybody that's got involved. Many associations from all over the country and different parts of the world have got involved. So that's really great, and uh, I hope to report back and give you an update by next month. So thanks to everyone that's been involved with that. So every so often in my vlogs, I'll give you a quiz question. And in the last vlog, I asked you which two techniques, one is a block, one is an attack, are performed in exactly the same way. They have different names, different techniques, but are performed in exactly the same way. Nobody sent in the correct answer. The best answer I did get was from Mendoza FC. Thank you for sending in your answer. He said the outward vertical kick and hooking kick, or the inward vertical kick and crescent kick, are the same. Well, not quite, but although it was a good answer, let's go back to the dojang to find out what is the correct answer. So is a hooking kick the same as an outward vertical kick? And is a crescent kick the same as an inward vertical kick? Well, not quite. The hooking kick is a block, and you block outwards and slightly down at the end using your side instep. Whereas an outward vertical kick is an attack and you use a foot sword and you move outwards in a straight line. So they're performed in a distinctly different way, no very similar, and they use a different tool. And the crescent kick blocks also curving slightly down and using the side sole. Whereas an inward vertical kick is using the reverse foot sword and again moves in a straight line for the attack. So they're performed slightly differently and they use a different tool. But the technique that's performed the same as a block or attack is this one. A straight elbow downward thrust or a straight elbow downward block. So when you use it as an attack and you've got your opponent down, you can use the straight elbow downward thrust as an attack and you can also use it as a block using the point of the elbow to knock the leg down. So that's the answer to the question. Straight elbow downward thrust and straight elbow downward block are performed in exactly the same way, but they have a different name, a different technique. So there you have it. The answer to the quiz question was straight elbow downward thrust and straight elbow downward block. Now I'll have another quiz question for you later on. But I also asked in the last vlog to send in questions that you wanted answered. I didn't get many questions in, which is a shame because as a Taekwondo student, it's always good to ask questions. Try to be an active learner rather than a passive one. A passive learner is one that just waits for the instructor to give them information. An active learner will ask questions. Try to find out what you don't know and then ask your instructor. Now, I always try and encourage my students to do that. And one day I sat my students down and said, any questions? There weren't no questions. So I said, well, obviously, if you haven't got any questions, you know it all. Now, of course they don't. They're just too shy to ask, probably. But then I gave them the speech about being an active learner rather than a passive learner. And to illustrate this, I picked on one of the students. He was a green belt. I said, stand up. I'm going to ask you a question. What's the difference between L stance and fixed stance? He said, fixed stance is longer. I said, correct, but by how much? He didn't know. So I said, well, you don't know. So there's an example of you not being an active learner. You didn't find out. So sit down. So I said, right, any more questions from anyone? There was no answer. 
So I said, okay, fine, you know it all, good. But before we go, just one more question. I'm going to ask one further question. So I picked on the same green belt. I said, stand up. I'm going to ask you another question. What's the difference between a nail stance and a fixed stance? He was shocked. I asked him the same question. Of course, he still didn't know the answer. That illustrates the point that even though I illustrated to him that he didn't know that particular bit of information, he didn't even bother to find out there and then. So try and be an active learner. If there's something that you don't know, try and find out, okay? Now, I did get a question in from Nick Turton, who's a parent of one of my students. Uh, he used to train in Taekwondo, and he said to me, he always found it difficult to know which way to cross the arms when you're blocking. And the answer to this is this. It depends which way your arm twists. That's the easiest way to remember. If your arm twists this way, for example, when you're using inner forearm or reverse knife hand, then it's going to start underneath, slightly outside. And if your arm twists this way, for example, using knife hand or outer forearm, and then it's going to twist from, uh, it's going to start from the top, slightly inside. Okay? So that's an easy way to remember. So for example, a back fist strike twists this way. Well, not completely, but it twists that way slightly. So it's going to start from underneath, slightly outside. So you always start back fist strike from under. You never start from the top. So this gives rise to my next quiz question. So see if you can answer this for the next time. Back fist strike never starts from the top, always starts from underneath. Okay? So in which pattern in Taekwondo does the back fist strike start from the top? Let's see if you can answer that. And I'll give you the answer next time. Okay? So that's it for now. So I'm on holiday now, so I've got plenty of time to make vlogs. So I'm going to make another couple of uh, vlogs in the next month. See you then.